Hey everyone, Gary Simon of CourseCentral.com, and today we're going to take a look at Ionic Native. Now first, this video that you're watching here is a part of my free Ionic course, and it's the third lesson video, and you can find that linked here in YouTube to CourseCentral.com. So, what is Ionic Native? Well, basically it's a set of plugins that allow you to add native mobile functionality to your apps, and it can even allow you to access other services. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install these plugins as well as how to use them and even remove them. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, first we wanna set up a test project if you haven't been following along with the course. Uh, if you have been, then you already have your first project set up and you can skip this step. However, if you're landing on this particular tutorial or lesson page and you weren't following along, we want to type in the following command. First, you want to CD into your code folder, wherever that may be. And we're going to type in Ionic start first project blank template and V2 for Ionic 2. So I'm going to let this run and I'll come back. All right, great. After that's complete, we'll CD into it and we're ready to go. All right, so how to install an Ionic native plugin. Now installing a native plugin is made simple with the Ionic command line interface or CLI. So the format is as follows. Ionic, this is how we reference the Ionic command line interface, very simple. And then plugin add, this lets Ionic know that we want to add a plugin. And then the plugin name, which can either be in the form of a plugin ID, a local path, or a git URL. So when this command is finished running, it'll place the plugin in a plugins folder inside of the project root. So how do we use an Ionic native plugin after it's been installed? Well, first you have to select the intended component file that will use the plugin, and then we add the plugin as an import at the top. So as you can see, you can add multiple Ionic native plugins with a single import statement. And these native plugins will always be added from Ionic hyphen native. So after a plugin has been important, you're then free to use it in your component class. So the documentation provides you with a usage example, along with any associated methods and options with the plugin. So let's go ahead and give it a go ourselves. First, I want you to visit the Ionic native documentation right here. And this is gonna provide you with a list of all of the available plugins here on the left. And as you can see, there's quite a few. So let's say for example, that we wanted to add the geolocation Ionic native plugin to our application. So as we can see right here, the very first line shows you how to install it into your application. So I'm just gonna copy this and we're gonna go back to the console and make sure you're inside of the correct project folder. I'm gonna right click to paste it and then hit enter. All right, once that's complete, let's go ahead over to our code editor. I'm gonna use Visual Studio Code. And if we come in here into the plugins folder, as I mentioned earlier, we'll see that it adds Cordova plugin geolocation along with any other associated plugins that this particular plugin will use. Okay. So let's go to source and we'll go to pages. And here we have our home.ts file. Now going back to the documentation, we'll see we have usage. And the very first line is the import. So we can go ahead and copy that. We'll switch back to our component. And at the very top, I'll just paste in geolocation from ionic-native. Now, reverting back to the documentation, we could see we have something called static members and it lists get current position with options as an argument and also watch position with options as an argument as well. Now, we can see there's just two of them and if we look at the usage examples, it shows us how to use each one of these methods. So we have geolocation.get current position and then also watch position. If we go back down here, we could see each one of these also returns 
a geo position, as well as coming down here for this watch position, it also returns a geo position. So what exactly does that even mean? Let's go down here until we find geo position. Now we could see we have two parameters. We have chords as in coordinates and the type is coordinates. Now, what exactly does that mean? That's not a string or an integer like or any other usual type that we're usually accustomed to seeing for a parameter type. So if we scroll up, we'll see coordinates right here. So this is in reference to this right here. So we'll see we have a parameter of latitude, longitude, accuracy, altitude, and all these other ones. And it gives us a nice description along with their types. Now, additionally, if we come over here, we also see for each one of these for get current position, as well as watch position, we'll see that the parameters accept a type of called geolocation options. Same thing right here under watch position. So if we scroll all the way down, we'll find that as well. So these are optional parameters. There's three of them that we can pass to it. So in the example up here though, we could see they decided not to pass any type of parameters with either of these methods. So if you wanna know what those parameters are, of course, you can read down here. We have a maximum age. It gives you a description, a timeout, and enable high accuracy. Okay, so let's go ahead and hop into our component TS, or our home TS file rather. And we'll go ahead and say for example, we want a button when clicked, it will call a method, we'll name it watch, and it will re return on the screen the latitude and longitude, as well as the accuracy. Now remember, latitude, longitude, and accuracy are just some of the returned values that we can use. So let's go ahead and first define three properties here at the top. So we'll have chords, type any, accuracy, type any, and error, type any as well. So let's come over here and let's create a watch method and we'll reference geolocation, get current position. So then response to open up in squiggly braces. We'll make this dot chords, which, which is in reference to this property up here, will equal the response dot chords dot latitude. All right, then we'll also do plus a space and also do response chords dot longitude. There we go. We'll also do this dot accuracy equals the response chords accuracy. We'll also put plus and a space meters. So again, where did I get this from? The chords and the accuracy. Well, if we go back to our documentation, we'll see we have down here, we have chords and its type is coordinates. And then up here, we have latitude, longitude, accuracy, altitude, etc. So it's chords dot any of these. All right, so let's also add a catch for the error if there's a potential error that's returned. So much in the same way, we'll open this up. This dot error equals error getting location plus error. All right, that's it. So we'll save it and we'll go back to our home.html. And I'm gonna select all and then just paste what I have here from the written tutorial, which you can find by the way. And all we do, we do is have an ion card, ion card content, a button, which we're using click event binding to the watch method that we just created. And then we have position using interpolation for the chords, accuracy, and we're using an ng if conditional, if the error exists, then show the error. 
All right, so let's save that. I'll go back to the console. We'll type in ionic serve dash L for lab view. And here we are. So let's go ahead and hit get position. Oops, I have meters in here. I have to remove that real quickly. We'll go back to our code editor. Get rid of that. To remember to update that. And then we'll go back, get position. And we have our latitude right here and then the longitude right here. And then we also have accuracy, which because I'm on a desktop, it's really, really off. However, if you were to connect your phone, whether it be iOS or Android, uh, and type in the command, let's go ahead and get out of here, control C, type in the command ionic run. And if you have Android, you type in Android and hit enter. And by the way, you may have to do a little bit of setup initially for this to work if you haven't done it yet. But if you have your phone connected through a USB, it will run the app on your phone. And then when you press that uh, button for get position, it'll give you a accuracy that's probably a lot better as long as obviously when you have your GPS turned on. So uh, when I did it, I think the accuracy was around 17 meters. So it worked pretty good. All right, and that is essentially how you use and install these Ionic Native plugins. And there's a lot of them here. So, you know, I would really just encourage you to experiment with them. Um, and really it's the same thing for all of these. We have the name, we have how to install it. We also have usage, and then it provides you with all of the other necessary information, such as parameters, their types, etc. So it's really just a matter of understanding the documentation and also how to read it. And eventually you'll be able to use any of these with relative ease. So let's also discuss just one final thing. I Sometimes you're going to be experimenting with different plugins and if you're not ending up using them, then you wanna get rid of them from your project. Because if we go back to our code editor and we look inside our plugins folder, we start adding a lot of these, it's going to just unnecessarily bulk the project up. So how do we remove them? Well, it's very simple. If we go here, we'll assume we're done with this project. We're gonna type in Ionic plugin remove and then the plugin name. So in our case, it would be geolocation. So we'll type in geolocation and there we go. So now if we revert back to our code editor, we'll see it is no longer there. And of course, we'd also obviously need to remove any reference up here as well, as it won't work. All right, so hopefully now you have a good understanding of how Ionic native plugins work. So in the next lesson, we're gonna take a look at how to deploy your Ionic app. I'll see you then.